this is old cam. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're doing, we're starting our cans daily. Now we've been covering cans for, this is our fifth day or sixth this day? This is the sixth day. Yeah. Uh, but when we say cans daily, it's the Cans Film Festival started earlier today. And so we'll be going over information that we actually received from some, Cans itself. Yeah, some of this information, uh, as we get closer to the bottom of the page, the information is within the last 10, 20 minutes. So you're going to be getting, we're doing this thing as close as we can to being live. You won't get it till later today, but later today is their night and they're not doing anything. So, mm -hmm. And so the quote of the day is from Steven Spielberg, who's the president of the jury, which is, <laughs> we will see films, we will talk about them, and we will present you with the outcome. Here, there is no campaign like in the Oscars, and it is a breath of fresh air. There's always campaigns. It doesn't make any difference. If you don't campaign, you don't get anything done. It's, just, it's a different sort of campaign. You have, first of all, your main campaign is just getting it through the front door. Yeah. Because they have a selection process, which, you know, the, last year, for instance, I think there was four American films, which is a real rarity. So you know yeah. that they really work hard to get that. So. And then we got the feature film jury. Um, the jury, the 66th Festival of Cannes, presented by Steven Spielberg, gave its inaugural press conference on Wednesday and extracts from that press conference. This happened an hour ago. Okay, Steven Spielberg, my opinion is very straightforward. We are always judging, we are constantly judging films we see at the cinema, evaluating them and trying to see what is radically new in them. Films are always in competition with each other for audiences' attention. And Kev, no kidding, I think it's important to contribute to the celebration of films. I finally had the time to sit down and watch films. Kansas prestigious uh, festival that has done a lot to promote the film in which films in which I've acted. Yeah, mm -hmm. which means generally speaking, if it is a we were we did yesterday, if it's a, a popular Cannes film, it doesn't really make a lot of the box office, and box office is what's really important. Actually, we did because we talked about the top ten highest grossing films that won the Palme d'Or. Yeah. yeah, I was quite and surprised. And the most popular films ever, so, and most of them have never made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. 110 million was the top on the list. They, they would call those art films, right? Yeah. And no, Naomi Kawaz, uh, the festival is a place of encounters and friendship. Every year it sends a message to the world. During our meetings yesterday, Stephen came out with this fantastic phrase. We have different nationalities and professions, but we have a shared language, a passion for cinema. Well, actually, the shared language is simply film. Mm -hmm. Because the camera, it may, you may have a different camera, you may speak different languages, but what is being shot is the same no matter what country. You're, you're shooting it in a communist country, a capitalist country, uh, a poor country, it's still the same business. And Daniel as well, looking at the Films Award, the Palms d'Or, since the beginning of the festival, I realized that I had seen a lot of them and that these films had shaped my taste as a spectator. Having the opportunity to continue this tradition is a rare thing indeed. Yep, we, I think we have Idala Balan. This is the first time I've been to Cannes, the first time I've ever sat in a jury, and the 100th anniversary of Indian cinema. It's a great honor, and I hope to learn as much as possible to sort and watch. I've been to Cannes, I think, a dozen times in my life, and basically it's, uh, um, if uh, you aren't really heavy into uh, European cinema, you're not really going to like Cannes. And Christian Monguil, it is very difficult to judge films. I look for honesty and courage in a director. A director's first step is to succeed in doing what he wants. The second is to be original. And we got Christoph Balls. An award is always the result. <laughs> yeah, it's the result he likes most. I know that, but the result of what? Good psychoanalysis involved both psychoanalysis and a patient. We each, uh, each of us have our way of carrying out our task, and mine is perhaps more descriptive than Christians, basically. I'm <laughs> going, okay, I feel yeah. like we missed something on that quote. I, I think that, that basically, like he didn't have anything else to say, and just said the same thing three <laughs> times. So. Yeah. What was it? The answer is in the question. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we actually, we have, we've sat there um, at Q&As with the gentleman. He's a very intelligent person, but he sometimes rambles on a lot. Like he loses his train of what he was going to say. And just, it's, it's, it's why he looks like, he, he really does good comedy work because he seems to be somewhere in He really, world, yeah, so. he really is good at yeah. that. Ang Lee, honesty is essential. After that, we will no doubt discuss aesthetic, political, or social considerations. But there will be something that will touch us that we will be unable to even put into words, and that will be the palm d'or. 
I hope so, because otherwise we will have to rationalize things. <laughs> yeah, which is just what we saw. Happening. Actually, I love that. It's like when they, they something touches them and they can't put it in, they can't. They ramble. <laughs> right? They call it the Palme d'Or. So, if you're going for the Palme d'Or, <laughs> yeah. all they know is it's something really special. And then we got the, um, we got Baz uh, Lurman on the uh, press conference for, which followed, because what happens is after they have these movies, they have press conferences and then they go have, later that evening, they have the, the event for it. This was uh, The Great Gatsby. I like that. We cannot f fail to be inspired by the story of Gatsby. I, I have. I'm not. Now, I'm, I'm curious what made them want that to be the opening film. Oh, uh, probably money. Oh, uh, and it does have something to do with it came out very close to it, the, it basically the what opening happens is, is that they're probably, um, I'm guessing the sponsor, their sponsors are the film because it's a, it's actually an honor to be the first in a closing film. It always film. You'd rather be, here's one to tip off, you'd rather be the closing film. Because the closing, there's not as many people there. No, but the closing film is one that they think was important relevance, and they want to end the uh, end the show with the closing film. It's something. Oh, that, it's, it's almost lasting. always something that they wanted to nominate, but can only nominate so many movies. So they put the best of what they couldn't they couldn't nominate at the very end movie, and they close it with what they think should have been, but didn't. And obviously, the Gatsby's mo most of you know are the Great Gatsby is already out in theaters. So I was kind of surprised that it was there. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, no, but, but it's it a PR is, thing. But it is PR, and part of it is it's unique in costuming and celebration, and so. Yeah, but it's a one-week wonder, unfortunately, because Star Trek is coming out this week. Ah. But uh, he, okay, what inspired the film for the gentleman? He was on a train to Siberia and had a copy of the novel. He read it. That's how everything got started. Well, that's generally how they always started. Mm. In the current climate, I think we're going to fail to be inspired by the story of Gatsby. It was a rich jerk. So, I mean, that's, that's be. We, and I think so much of it is that they wish they could put themselves in that time period to experience it, right? Yeah, but it's a time period that basically, okay, I can say, can we say socialist? I don't like these people. Mm -hmm. Because it's basically, it's an it's a era, era of decadence. It's a time that everybody outgrew. So they're making a thing that basically shows how bad we were in the end. It's not done in Europe, it's done in the United States, folks. But uh, I like that he, he had to buy the rights to the novel, find the work, the people to work with. And early on, Leonardo wanted to be a part of the project. Yeah, I think it's part of his company that did it. So. Oh, did, was it? I think it's also a perk for doing a couple of other movies for the studio that brought in like several hundred million dollars. Well, and profit. DiCaprio's played Howard Hughes before. Yeah, he's not playing Howard Hughes, he's playing the great Gatsby. I know, but he it reminds me of a similar character. Yeah, way. well, so, yeah. Yeah, and Boz Lerman told the press about his experience at the film's premiere in the U.S. At the end of the film, a woman looked at me and said, I've come from Vermont to see what you did with my grandfather's book, I froze. She added, I think Scott would have been proud of this film. It's been the best compliment, it's the best compliment I've received. Okay, we're going to try something really great for people. I was in the original Great Gatsby done in the United States. My father was in it. I, you know, um, I, I, I danced, folks. So they needed people that could dance. It sucked then, the people that were working on the movie. I've never seen it. I was in it, but you'd go, Sarah, you'd go, I could, I could take my hat off a little bit, more or less. But you can tell you what we, could, we could tell when we were doing this, the, the, those sequences, that they are paying you to do this, aren't they? That's how, that's what I remember talk, uh, we were at lunch and they were talking to the main actors. And he said, I never liked Scott Fitzgerald and I knew the man. He's a great screenwriter, but what a really bad novelist. So, okay, now the Gatsby is something that all American kids are stuck with reading at school. They know Gatsby, they really hate Gatsby because it's forced on you. And Leonardo DiCaprio emphasized the importance of the novel in the United yeah, States. That's what he said, right? yeah. Gatsby is compulsory reading in secondary school. People still try, today still try to dissect them, this, or actually this novel, to interpret every line. It's a kind of endless quest. We wanted to reshape the novel's characters, and it's so exciting to work with a text of this caliber. Now, I'm just curious when he says we wanted to reshape the novel's characters. I'm no, because I've, I've read the reviews. The reviews are such as that they they said each of the actors seemed to be doing a different movie. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, <clears throat> and so they all did their interpretation of what they thought it should be. Yeah, which meant that uh, we've been to these things, but it means the director basically doesn't really give a damn. He's letting the actor decide how they should do it. 
We've been to a lot of these Oh, tapes. they call that creative freedom. Yeah, the actors basically take the role and, okay, it's like Johnny Depp took the role and made it his. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean. And that, um, that Robert Downey Jr. took Iron Man and made it his. These characters are all trying to take something that's been done multiple times and make it theirs, which you can't do because the Gatsby, you could really try doing something unique. You could try doing Gatsby as Gatsby was written. The guy was a great screenwriter, folks. He wrote the screenplay for the original one. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and we, Craig Pierce on adapting the novel. Uh, Gatsby, okay, uh, we reread, we reread the book to try and look at the difference in different levels in depth. The decadence and drunkenness of the years are very dear. Mm -hmm. Given the current financial oh, very crisis, clear. very clear. Given the current financial crisis, this book finds an echo in today's world. It inspires readers of every age differently. It's basically it means it's an attack on American society. That's what the whole bloody thing is, you know. It's uh, which is why it doesn't go resonate well. We got uh, here. We got Cannes 2013, a tighter globalized selection. This is um, uh, how they did the selection process this year, which I thought was neat. More candidates and fewer selected issues of identity and intimacy. Movie makers who are mobile and have put themselves in danger. These are some of the main trends of the, the films this year. That's interesting. Movie makers who are mobile and put themselves in danger? Okay, this, we don't have, we got, uh, our cameras are much lighter and able to do things. This morning, I give an example. I, I, I live over by one of the movie studios and we saw a young lady this morning in a bikini running down the street repeatedly with a camera held in front of her like this. Oh, she and was holding She was up. holding the camera, ducked into a corner, did a quick change, come back around again and ran again. That's that's mobile cameras today, which they didn't have the availability of when Gatsby was done any of the other times. Oh my gosh. It sure certainly makes a difference in filming, doesn't it? Yeah. It gives you freedoms Ooh. And anxieties you didn't have before. I love this. The Cannes Selection Committee watched 1,858 full-length feature films and 5,033 short lot. films. The numbers show uh, strong growth, but the selection remains contained even tighter as we compare it to 2002. Which That's means, a lot of films. Yeah, well, I can tell you how you view a movie because it's how I, I grew up doing it. They look the movie. Um, they, they, they well, this is really bad. But the, in in, Calif in in the business, they look at it. So they'll look at it. They can tell from the opening of the movie whether the movie's going to be any good. The problem comes is sometimes the movie it gets better. It grows on you. And that's the movies. <clears throat> that's the movie that you should have put in competition but didn't. Is that where they say the first impression makes all the difference? It is because right. you're trying to see. I mean, if the movie looks like it's going to go on forever, you know in the beginning of the movie. And, it, and also, here's a, you know... Or you can't been, judge a book by its cover. Yeah, but you can tell if the, book, if the movie's like five hours long. Yeah. Some of them are, so... Uh, but what, the selection, 53 full-length movies against 61 last year, 20 of which are in competition, 18 or in uncertain regard, and 15 out of competition, an additional 27 short movies have been selected. Nine in competition, eight for Cinna Foundation. That's the film school movement. So. Though only one female director is in contention for the Palme d'Or, only one. That's a total a, of 11 movies by women figure in the official selection, including four first films. 11 candidates are in selection for the Camera d'Or, derived from the official selection, six of whom are in a certain regard, which stays faithful to its role of a trailblazer. What happened was, I'm guessing they didn't get the memo from last year, which all the film commission, all the film festival were getting. There's not enough women in competition. Mm -hmm. One woman per Palme d'Or. I think there's only been four ever, uh, four ever nominated and, and. Well, Sofia Coppola as a movie there. Yeah. Well, and, and I think part of it is there's just not as many female directors. Period. Oh well, yeah, there's probably more female think directors so? in the world than there are males because it's easier for the women to get the movies made than it is for the males. It is. Well, because women can basically, uh, women are better at getting things done than men because you know some of the men have been five, five. I mean, if I can get the movie financed and done in seven years, it's good. The woman basically goes out and women can be more direct than the males. Men try to do it. <laughs> women go. I need. You know. We're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but according to uh, Terrier Trimble, the films of the 66th Festival evoke identity, commitment, and intimate lives of individuals that tell us how fragilities of life to build the human being that we are. This is the trend. If you look at that, that's how they selected a movie this year. They basically decided upon 
uh, a theme, and this is how they picked the movies. If the movie from the synopsis, you actually got to, they, they may not have looked at the movies completely, but they read the synopsis on all of them, mm -hmm. folks. The and fragilities of life, which means the human beings that we are. So it's a very personal context. Which means Francois Truveau would do well, Jacques Cruz Tahiti wouldn't because he was a comic and Truveau was a great thought-provoking person, so comic movies would not do well this year. Well, it makes you kind of, it's kind of interesting because he depend, I mean, films go into the festivals depending on when they're finished, Yeah. right? And if they pick a theme, you don't know what the theme is nope. that far in advance. No, we have no idea. This is the whole bit. So one year they may do better than the others. So you, you just go right down, like I said, from the synopsis, they, they may have like 1,800 movies, but they automatically start selecting. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is why the end movie is so important. It's the movie that they goofed on. Which also makes you think, how important that synopsis is. The synopsis is very in the synopsis and the beginning. It's you. Um, you you want to hit. You want to grab the people, the critics. You need to grab them in the very opening. You cannot grab them a half hour into the movie because they're they've already left the theater. So, but uh, uh, we've got uh, through U.S. and French film. Though U.S. and French film dominate the selection, other parts of the world bear witness to tremendous vitality, including Mexico, the Philippines, and Palestine. With the movie screening and uncertain regard for every, for the very first time, a short film and competition. Using the standard criteria of production, 28 countries are represented, but it's increasingly difficult to determine the nationality. We know that, folks, because we've seen movies that basically couldn't get Best Foreign Oscar that were made in a foreign country by mm -hmm. a foreign, made in a foreign country by a foreign country because... Isn't that like Mel Gibson's movie? Yeah, which was basically, it was done in a foreign language, you know, Latin is a foreign language. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't get the nomination in Best Foreign Film because they said it didn't qualify. Um, this is, is demonstrated this year with the films of Assard, Faraday, Amal, Dish, and Nicholas Whiting Griffin, all three in a running for the Palme d'Or. That's how varied they think are. Because actually, we read off about some of these guys the other day. I don't know why that came up. So we shouldn't have. Now we got the, this is the events. This is the this is the stuff that came up about. 20 minutes ago. Ooh, now events. Don't miss these highlights. This is important because if you read this one, this is happening only today and tomorrow. Cartooning for Peace Action Auction. Woody and incisive sketches of legendary directors and films from cinematic history will be sold at auction on Monday, May 20th in aid of Cartooning for Peace. The artists Pantu and Kofi Annan lie behind the creation in 2008 of this group of press illustrators. Its aim is to fight against all forms of intolerance and defend freedom of expression and associated exhibition of drawings will be on display at the Palais de Festival from the 15th to the 26th of May. Yeah, we got the guest, the Cannes Classics, which is, uh, we haven't had a big guest list yet, but uh, you remember you were Jean Couteau, who died 50 years ago, uh, Andrew L. Dombasi was presenting Opium, her contemporary musical comedy which tells of the director's ill fate of love affairs in the 1920s, he's a Frenchman, folks. I actually worked with him on an ancient thing. You know, they actually do do movies in France and that basically have happy themes. Okay, we're going to give you The Artist, which was oh. a fun movie with, uh, with a lot of it, dancing and singing in it. So it was a silent movie. And actually, that was pretty unique. Yeah. I mean, very unique. Because I remember when we saw the screening, you're going, they're doing... I mean, no, okay. but, I mean when was the last time a black and white film was yeah, made? I was lucky. I sat right in the middle of everybody that worked on the movie. I mean, I'm looking mm -hmm. there with the movie. I also had some uh, major actors that were there to watch it. You know, one of the guys said, one of the people are talking, there's no sound. The guy said, there's sound, there's nothing but sound. He said, told him, shut up and listen, you'll hear the sound. There's always sound in silent movies. That's why I got a nomination for best sound in a silent film. Uh -huh. so, and they may not always be See, there's That's my right. movie. Which one? The Beauty and the Beast. I was in that one. Really? 1946? Yeah. How old are you? He I, is old, Cam. I, I, I would, I've been working for... You were quite young. I was in my second decade of working at that time. In 1946? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would put it this way. I made my first movie in 1932. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And a restored copy of Beauty and the Beast will also be screened as part of Cannes Classics. 
In addition, the festival will celebrate with restored copy the 40th anniversary of The Big Feast by Marco Ferreri. We're going and to that movie, too. Really? Yeah. Tell and about, what is it? The, it, it oh, it's about a feast. And the 50th yeah. anniversary of Cleopatra. I wonder if that's a restored version. Anybody want to guess what I played in Cleopatra? What? I got to play a Jew. Actually, that would be... You know, Cleopatra, when they filmed that with Elizabeth Taylor, I mean, they went way over a budget oh, yeah, on costume. They, they, the problem is they brought people in from the United States to do something in another country, which was not very bright. I also remember Roddy McDowell didn't get an Academy Award nomination because somebody screwed up. They figured he would have won the Best Supporting Actor that year. Oh. He played the uh, Octavius, I think. The, you know, this should have been the, you know, he became that the co-dictator, but... Uh, I would like to see. But here's the next one, though. If the restoration of the Umbrellas of Cherbourg will be celebrated by screen in the presence of Agnes Varda, Kim Novak will present a restored copy of Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock before a prize giving at the closing ceremony. Finally, to mark this centenary of the birth of René Clement, the festival will welcome Hélène Delon for the screening of the restored version of Plain Soleil. Ellen DeLong is a very unique person. Ellen DeLong was a member of the Bank Press Forum. He also sang and dance. Oh, see, he part was, of it is I have no clue who he He also looked long. really good in westerns. I think we're going to have to put on, on some of these things right here, the cartoon and piece auction, the camera. Oh, yeah, that's the, these Instead are separate. Of just, um, this is an in them. piece because this is, uh, we're going to try to do events coverage. See, this, here's a piece. This really goes on forever, folks, because there's so much news to come on the first day. It'll get shorter tomorrow. But. Mm -hmm. We have Spotlight on the Indian Cinema, which is a big focus this year. In the footsteps of Egypt in 2011 and, the, and Brazil in 2012, the festival this year shines a light on another great film producing country, India. That's why one of the Indian actresses was on yeah. the, the jury, right? Yeah. And also because they have an increased presence um, within the film industry. A major delegation will be present to mark uh, of the centenary of the film industry in the country of Bollywood. India this year boasts three films in official selection. Monsoon Shootout by Amit Kumar, Bombay Talkies by Zoya Akhtar, Debakar Banerjee, Karen Johan. Or we we know about but we know sorry, about guys. the about the Monsoon Shootout uh, and Bombay Talkies. Those I've been hearing lots of info on. And so. by Sanjay Ray. That I know him. I know so. Steven Spielberg's jury will also include the Indian actor Vidya Balan, while actress and director Nandita Das will form part of the jury for short films and the Cine Fonda. Foundation. Actually, yeah, we were talking about that. Also, next is Jerry Lewis is in attendance. Yeah, basically, uh, it's going to uh, it's going to be honored at the screening of Max Road, the first film by Daniel Noah, in which he plays an old jazz pianist who suddenly loses his wife, which means he's going for an Oscar, folks. Uh, well, he's he's you know he's a little bit older than I am, but he looks a lot older than I am. Yeah, but it was for his role in um, The King of Comedy. No, but the, he, oh, he's famous for his role. Max Rose is, is uh, a new one. At is that screen. a new screen? I'm assuming it's brand oh. new. That's what my guess is. He's going for the Oscar. Oh, interesting. We could see Jerry Lewis give an Oscar this year. I would, well, you know, just like Christopher Plummer. It's his time. It was Christopher Plummer's last year. Yeah. It's, it's Jerry Lewis's time. So if he gets lots of good press at Cannes, and it, remember, he's basically got every every French decoration you can get because his style of filmmaking is okay. We're going to try it very simply. Play a lot. There there are two people in the entertainment industry that all modern filming owes their allegiance to. One is Desi Arnaz, who created the style of shooting that they use for television and motion pictures, and the other is Jerry Lewis because Jerry Lewis created the the way of uh, you know like stop action motion for films and stuff because he created what amounted to the, he took something else, he wanted to see what was going on, so he created a device to allow him to see what was going on before he went back to see the Russians, so he could do it then and there. That's why these movies cost level. Mm. And a special, oh wait a minute, let's see this one right here, Portraits of Filmmakers. This year we'll once again see past masters and up and coming names from a wide variety of backgrounds, offering up their visions of the truth, their emotions and their stories. The festival, has chosen to honor the filmmakers whose works make up the 2013 collection with an unexpected exhibition of the portraits head of the Lumiere and Debussy foyer which, at the Palais. Which means you get to see, what, you you get to to. see what the famous people of the industry, most of them have been dead for a long time, there's no real photographs of them, so you've got, 
Uh, Lumiere, uh, Lumiere, Lumiere. There, there is, and Debussy there is, but a lot of people aren't. Because a lot of what was done, as we did, we saw from Hugo, was destroyed in World War I. Oh, interesting. And the foundations of the European film industry come out of France before World War I. And special screening for secondary school students. Yeah, as in the past year, the Festival of Cons is offering secondary school students from the PACA region a, a chance to attend an exclusive screening, just, just like I used to do when I was a kid. They'd go, we'd go to the theaters and see the stuff. They will discover in an Park, the first film by Mohammed Hamad and uh, Jamel Debussy, who will both attend a special screening to take place on Tuesday the 21st, May at 2 p.m. at the Salle de uh, Jean Jean in the presence of the drum team. That's basically our news for today. Tomorrow you'll have more news that uh, we'll try to give you events, everything we can. Quotes for today. Every tomorrow I'm hoping to be able to tell you who's actually at Kansas. Probably yeah. that's coming up now, but we don't have access in a studio of online at all. So yeah, so, so stay tuned for our Cannes dailies. Of course, you'll find information on MBN's video web as well as on the travel suite. And one of the other things that we'll, the other segment we're doing on is all about well, events. Yeah. that are happening at Cannes. Because yeah, right now, as soon as I get back in, this everything that we just talked about, the video portion will be up later. This is all going to go up in about, you'll, you'll have seen it long before we get the video up because mm -hmm. right behind me is our wall, which is really, I mean, you talk about it being behind me, you know, <laughs> that, uh, man, I didn't realize it was that far behind me. I have one arm. But uh, that comes later because the green screening takes far more time than me putting up the info we just talked about. So anyway, join us for more. Wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us for all our daily newscasting 3D. And come, yes, friend us, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. But most of all, go to... You want to go to www.mbnnewsvideoweb.com for this information. You also want to go www.thetravelsuite.com for her event stuff, which is separate from this. This is the news news stuff, but she's telling you about... What's I you know from the person viewpoint, uh, uh, you know parties and what's going on with the people there. So and from both of those locations, you'll find us on Facebook or also on Twitter. But you can also just go to on Facebook as well as Twitter, Monty Bubbles, M O N T E B B B L E S, or for Facebook or Twitter, the Travel Suite. So come join us for more. <laughs>